All right, so in this video, we're going to continue our series on scattering objects with GeoScatter. In this video, we're going to focus on the tools that we can use in order to dictate specifically where objects go with things like masks, shapes, other things like that. If you have any questions about anything we talk about, feel free to leave them down below. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you do want to check out GeoScatter, you can check it out at the cgessentials.com slash GeoScatter. Note that that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do purchase through that link, I will receive a commission. I will also link to the full tutorial playlist in the notes below this video. But specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to use the masking tools inside of GeoScatter in order to dictate where things go in our scenes. We're going to use this 15th anniversary scene for Blender, or at least the base models in here as kind of a base to build around. You can get this for free through November 7th. I'll link to that in the notes down below as well. But let's jump over into Blender and take a look at this. And so the first thing that I've done, um, and I'm going to jump out of edit mode. Um, the first thing that I've done is I've just brought this in and I deleted out all of the systems that were associated with this. And I'm just going to use some low poly things just so our scene kind of performs better. I want you to understand the concepts, um, not necessarily the performance pieces or anything like that. So what we want to do is let's go ahead and let's place some of these low poly trees in our scene. Okay, so we're just going to use, we're not going to use biomes or anything like that. We'll just use like a simple preset scatter, maybe something like this one right here. And so I'm just going to click on this tree. I'm going to click on the option for scatter objects in order to scatter them on my surface. Now note that they came in off. So we can just toggle those on. They also are coming in with the uh, culling mask in here off, which I don't necessarily want. Um, so we'll go ahead and toggle that off for now and then we'll take a look at it in a minute. Um, but first thing you're gonna notice, way too many instances. So we're gonna go into the distribution settings for the scatter and bring that way down. I'm gonna set it to one or maybe like 0.1 or even 0 0.05, there we go, okay. And so what this did, right, is this came in here and this scattered these trees all the way across this surface. Right? And it scattered them everywhere in our scene. Well, the problem is you wouldn't have trees growing in the middle of your buildings. So what we need to do is we need to come in here and make changes to the scene to tell this where not to put trees. We don't want trees growing in the middle of our path right here. That's another example. And so to do that, we can use what's known as a culling mask. A culling mask is basically a mask that you use within your scatter system to tell scatter where to put things and where to not put things. And there's a number of different ways that we can do this. Okay, and so what I want to do is I want to scroll down to my culling masks right here. And specifically, we're going to start by using a vertex group. And so to use a vertex group, I want to check this box right here and then I want to reference a vertex group that I create. And so we can create our own vertex group over here just by clicking on the object data properties and then clicking on the plus button right here. And we're just going to say low poly area. We're going to hit the enter key. Okay. And so now what we want to do is we want to reference that vertex group. So in this case, right? I'm going to click on low poly area right here. Well, notice how this then gives me the ability to create new vertex data. So if I click on this, this is going to jump me over into white paint mode. And this is toggled on, so we're good here. And what I want to do is I want to start painting. And in this case, everything is set to zero. And so in this situation, I want to set my weight of my brush to one. Well, notice how when I do that, what that's going to do is that's going to let me paint in where these objects are going to go in my scene. So notice I can kind of paint around this right here, just like this. And so one thing that you could do if you wanted to is you could go ahead and tap into edit mode really quick. And within this vertex paint mode, you could go ahead and set everything to one and click on assign. And then if you jump back into weight paint mode right here, notice how everything is red and you can now set this where you can paint in a blue area like this. So now you're painting an exclusion area in here, right? An area where you want to remove this and everything else is going to be um, everything else. The scatter is going to be applied to it. Now you can also adjust the brush radius 
in here. If you want to make this a little bit bigger, that'll make your life a little bit easier. Um, but you can use this and notice how this is basically excluding anything within this white painted area that I have in here. Now, just one thing about this is note that you can also within your vertex group area, you can click on the option to reverse. So when you click on the option to reverse, what that's going to do is that's going to swap your weights um, one way or the other. And so when you swap that, what that means is that means that now your painted area is going to be an inclusion area instead of an exclusion area. So you can use the swap button in order to swap what the painting means inside of your scene as well, like this. And so this is actually really easy to do and really easy to use as long as this object or this uh, your surface that you've uh, applied your scatter to has enough geometry, right? So this works great because um, it has a bunch of geometric detail in here, right? If you go into edit, edit mode right here, you can see that there's a number of different vertices. And so let's say that we wanted to create another scatter system that references this plane. And we'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing. We'll reference maybe this box tree object this time. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna scatter it on the surface right here. Make sure we toggle it on, make sure we don't have a culling mask on here. We're gonna bring this down like 0 0.05 again, right? So this object is a little bit of a problem if you try to use the vertex groups. And so the reason it's a problem is because it only has four vertices in here, right? So if I was to add a vertex group to this one, and we'll just call this trees and reference it and try to paint in here, well, I only have four vertices to paint. Right? Notice how I can't paint around here. I can only set a weight for four vertices in my scene. So that's not necessarily helpful, right? So we're probably not going to use um, vertex groups in this case, but what we can do is we can use an image mask. And so I'm gonna check the box for image right here, and we're gonna go ahead and click on the plus button. And so when we click on the plus button, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a new image and you can take that image and you can actually do a paint on this surface. So if I click in here, I paint, and you're probably better off going into shaded mode right here, but notice how this is allowing me to paint in my model. So I can set my strength. We'll go ahead and make this a little bit smaller, but this is allowing me to paint in my model and it's generating an image that it's then using as a mask. So you can use the image mask function in order to create a mask on an object that doesn't have a whole lot of geometric detail. And then if you hold the control key in here, you're gonna be able to paint with the other color, but notice how I can bring these trees back in. So if you wanna mask things out or bring them in and you don't have geometric detail, use the image culling mask. And we're gonna go ahead and we're going to go back into object mode and we will toggle this system off right here. Now there are some other pretty cool functions in here for masking. So we've talked up to this point about the image mask and we'll go ahead and jump back over here. We've talked a little bit about the vertex group mask and the image mask, but there's other options in here as well. So like for example, this Bezier area, you can use this to reference, and I'm gonna toggle this vertex group off. You can actually create a curve or an area in here, and then you can reference that curve and it's going to mask objects out wherever that curve is. So notice how I tab it, notice how if I tab in here and I adjust this curve like this, this is actually going to mask things out that are level with that curve. So you can actually draw a shape where you want things to be in here um, and use this to mask things out. And so the cool thing about this is if you have this, uh, this curve selected, there's actually a little paintbrush in here um, that's going to pop up a draw curve mode. So when you click on the little paintbrush, notice what that does is that pops up this drawing mode. Well, now I can click and drag in my scene and notice how this is actually excluding things in my scene live while I'm drawing on this surface like this. So this actually does a really good job of allowing you to quickly add that in here. And just like before, note that there is the option in here and I'm going to hit enter to confirm to 
swap or reverse this so that it only includes trees in the areas that you've drawn as well. And so another cool function that's in here is say that you just want to be a little more visual with this, right? So say that we create a box right here and go ahead and apply the rotation and scale. And I'm going to set this object to be just a bounds. So we'll go into the viewport display and set this to be just bounds right here. But you could also use a Boolean. And so with the Boolean, you can um, create a collection of objects. So in this case, I'm just going to create a collection. I'm just going to call it Boolean, but you can put a cube in that collection and then you can reference that Boolean collection right here. Well, now this is going to remove trees based on where that object actually intersects with that surface. So that actually gives you a ton of control in here over where these would be um, because you could make changes to this object, right? It's just a geometric object. So if I add a split in here and then say that I was to take the surface, maybe like extrude it out a little bit, notice how it's using that shape in order to mask out where objects occur in GeoScatter. All right, and so another cool function is you can also mask out based on a material slot. And so let's say I was to select an area over here and I was to apply a different material, right? So we're going to apply this uh, soil sand material over here. So something a little bit different. Well, what you can do is within the material slot, you can check the box and tell it to mask out where a certain material happens. So notice how I'm able to use the material in order to mask out where objects are. So if you have a surface where you've painted like soil versus rocks or something like that, you can actually tell this, hey, wherever rock material is, don't show trees. So that's a pretty interesting way to be able to mask out where objects are placed as well. All right, then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and bring um, in a low poly rock object right here, just as kind of an example. There is also an option in here to use an object as a mask. So if I was to select or an object, but it doesn't actually have to be intersecting with anything in your scene. So I'm going to take this object and I'm going to apply my rotation and scale, but notice how this option for upward obstruction is going to allow you to select an object or a collection, um, actually just a collection, but I'm just going to call this one upward obstruction right here. I'm going to drag this bag of pie rock into upward obstruction, but now I can tell this to use the objects in upward obstruction in order to mask out um, anything in your scene, right? So notice how if I move this, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit bigger um, just because it's a little more, uh, it's a little more pronounced and maybe I'll switch it to, I'll go ahead and switch this to wire, but notice how now this is masking anything out that's under this object. So it's basically using the upward obstruction of the object to place or figure out where things should be. So this can be really powerful. You wanna be a little bit careful to not use an ultra high poly object because I think what it's doing is it's just smashing all of those down and creating a flat area. So the more info you have in here, the slower it's going to be. But in any case, this is a super cool way to mask things out in your scene using an object if you decide you want to do that. So that's kind of an overview of how you can exclude and add things in different areas inside of GeoScatter. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you do want to check out GeoScatter, I'll link to it on this page as well as the full getting started playlist. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.